I glorify your name. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome each and every one of you. Those of you watching us online, uh, whether you're watching a delayed broadcast or whether you're watching us live, this is Amazing Love. I'm Nick. And what you're sensing is the presence of the Holy Spirit because Jesus is in the house. Get your faith out there and trust Him. He is willing and He's able. He is a miracle working God. And I want to declare to you that just when you thought it was all over, just when you thought it was too late, I'm declaring to you it's not over till God says it's over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I'm excited this morning because I serve a living God. I'm excited because I have access to Him. I'm excited because He is willing and He's able. It's one thing for, for God to be able, but He's willing. He's willing and able. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so whatever we need, first of all, He has already provided it. And so we might go to the Lord and say, Lord, please heal me. And, and He'll say, no, I, I can't do that. I already have. <laughs> Lord, please do this for me. Do that. No, I can't. I've already done that. I'm not going to go back and die on the cross one more time. But what I can do is I can help you to receive what I've already freely given. And that's, that's what I'm going to talk about this morning under the direction of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about receiving from the Lord. Can you say receiving? Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says He's already freely given us all things. Say all things. All things. So all things, I mean... The Greek for all means all. That's right. If you're reading in Hebrew, the Hebrew for all means all. It means whatever you need, and even the things that you don't know that you need, He's already freely given you all things. The Bible says pretend your life and godliness. So that means everything in the natural realm and everything in the spiritual realm. He has already given it to us. And it's just like... It's like money in the bank. When you have money in the bank, you may not have it in your wallet, but it's there for you. All you have to do is make a withdrawal and receive what's already there. And the Lord has deposited our healing, our provision, wisdom for every situation, Divine knowledge for every situation. Favor whenever we need it. Provision for everything. He's already deposited that in heavenly places. Now you might say, well, I don't need it in heavenly places. I need it in my, in my hand. Why does He deposit in heavenly places? He does that to protect you. Why, why, do we put, why do we put money in the bank and not just keep it in a shoebox? It's really to protect our investment. Can you say amen? amen? Some people put it in the safe. Some people put it in the bank. It's to protect our investment. And then they have a great security system. And so we put our money where there's 24-hour security and where it's protected and then we can go and access it at the ATM or wherever, or whenever we need it. The Lord did not lay aside what He's freely given it, us to, 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 to prevent us from accessing it. He put it there because what He's given to you has your name on it. It's your promise. It's your provision. It's your healing when you need it. Hallelujah. It's your provision when you need it. Just when you need it. It's your answer when you have a question. And He's laid it up in heavenly places. Well, we're seated in heavenly places with Him. 
And then he's given us his word. And the Holy Spirit is here to reveal things to us. The Bible says that he reveals things to us that are not revealed to the natural senses. And some of the things that he's talking about are foolishness to natural people. But he's given it to us and he's revealed it to us. And, and he has enabled us as born again believers to receive everything that is freely given to us. And there are many, many people in the natural. There's so many stories that, that we can tell of people in the natural that had received an inheritance or there was funds set aside for their family and either they didn't know about it or they didn't know how to access it. And if you don't know about what God has given you, and, you, and number one, or, or number two, you don't know how to access it. And let me add another thing. Number three, you don't know how to keep what you've accessed. Then you're going to do without, even though it's already been given. Now, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, can, can be grieved. His heart can be broken. It breaks the heart of God for you to not walk in everything that He's given you. Jesus gave His life so that you can be healed and walk in divine health. Jesus gave His life so that you can have a relationship with God, so you can have access with God, so that you can walk in favor, so that you can walk in victory as a child of God. When we don't access that, when we suffer as a result of not accessing what He's given us, or when we don't know what He's given us, therefore we don't even try to access it, or somehow we receive it only to lose it again. I remember a friend of mine, powerful minister, Dr. Noel Hayes, he was speaking to me and sharing with me. He said that Benny Hinn would invite him to his healing crusades to come and teach the people how to keep the healings that they've received. And Benny told them, they said, he said, people come in and I mean blind eyes open, deaf ears open, and, and amazing miracles happen, but we have a common complaint that people come in under the anointing and they, they get healed and then sometime by the, by the time they walk out the door in the parking lot the pain's back, the symptoms are back but they really were healed. You talk to healing evangelists uh, anywhere in the world and they'll tell you that one of the biggest challenges is not, I mean it's easy for them, they're operating in the gift in the gifts of the Spirit. So it's very easy for them by their faith, they connect with God, they release the anointing, and people get healed. When you have those gifts, it's easy. It's the easiest thing in the world to impart that and for people to receive it. And there's many people even watching right now online. You've received something and, and even as you're watching right now, you say, well, it, it's back and, and it's worse than it was before. Some people watching online said, well, I've been, I've been trusting the Lord to, to do something for me for all these months or years or whatever, and I've never received it. Correct. That's correctly said. It's, the wrong way to say it is that He's never given it. The right way to say it is you've never received it. So we're going we're gonna to go there today. Hallelujah. Give you some good news today. And, and so Norval would come and he would teach people out of the Word of God how to keep what God's given them. And, and how to walk in it. And if, if ever any symptoms came back, I mean how to go in boldly and take it back in Jesus' name. 
You don't need Benny Hinn to walk in divine health. Thank God for... And if Catherine Kuhlman was still alive, you wouldn't need her to, to, to walk in divine health. We don't need Ronald Bonke to walk in divine health. Thank God for his evangelists and powerful ministers. But Jesus has freely given it. It's in our new covenant. Hallelujah. And, and yet there's so many people, Christians today, that again, they either don't know that it's already been given, or they've been told and they simply don't believe it because they say, well, I've been believing for years and years and haven't received it. Or, yeah, I remember going to that meeting and the pain left, but then the pain came back and I don't know what to do. And, <laughs> see, the same, the same devil that puts stuff on people, and I want, I mean, here's some really good news, that no sickness and no disease and no hardship and nothing that represents death ever comes from the Lord. Amen. I mean, nothing like that. It... The Lord is a good God and the Bible says that, that only good things come from the Father of light. Hallelujah. Say good things. So first of all, the Lord doesn't put stuff on you that He died on the cross for you to be delivered from. Let's make that very clear. Well, maybe He allows it. No, He does not allow it. In fact, He proved that He did not allow it. He went and he sent Jesus. And part of what Jesus did on the cross is says, I'm not allowing it. I'm paying the price. And by me paying the price, I'm saying I'm not allowing sickness and disease and poverty and pain and addiction. I'm not allowing it. I'm paying the price for freedom and for blessing. In the Old Covenant... God had to allow certain things because the price had not yet been paid. But we're living in a new covenant. And sometimes what people do is they don't understand covenants. And, and so they take a bit of the old covenant, a bit of the new covenant, and they come up with their own covenant. We need, to, we need to watch how we believe. I believe in reading the whole Bible. But when you read the Old Testament, we're not in the Old Testament anymore. It's a type and shadow of the New Testament. And so whenever you read about them killing animals, then you think about Jesus, the spotless lamb who gave his life. Whenever you read about the temple... Then you, then, then you look forward and you say, Thank the Lord, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm the new temple. And so, whenever you read about <laughs> how that the priest would go in, and he would go into the Holy of Holies, you say, Thank you, Jesus. You are my high priest and you have gone in once for all. And you have paid the price. But we don't go back and, and start and build another temple and go through all of these things. So many people are going through rituals and things and, and saying things and believing things that are not according to what Jesus established in the New Covenant. Hallelujah. And so in the New Covenant, he's, He is... Jesus paid the price once and for all. And we now have unmerited favor, which is grace, towards the Holy Spirit, towards the Father, towards the Son. And when we have unmerited favor, we are, re we are united, we have access. Say access. access. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I want to just talk to you a little bit about just <laughs> receiving what He's already freely given us. Keeping it. 
walking in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's read out of Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 35 to verse 39. It says, so we do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Say great reward. Are we unable to bring up the scripture? Okay, let's see. We'll see if we can get it in the house here real soon. So that you can all see the word. There we go. Let's look at it again. So we do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now. Then you will receive what he has promised. Say receive. receive. Then verse 38, 39 says, And my righteous ones will live by faith. Another translation says the just will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away or draws back. But we are not like those who turn away from God or who draw back from God to their own destruction. Whenever you draw back, whenever you pull away, whenever you step back, it's always to destruction. But we're not like that. We're not like those who, pull, who draw back to their own destruction. But to those who have faith and are saved. We have faith and we're saved and we live by faith. We are the just. Or another word, another way of translating the word just is righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. And God has designed it for the righteous to live by faith. Say faith. faith. Now in short, faith is the receiver. Faith is how we receive. Faith is how we keep what God has given to us. By faith. Now we're not just talking about faith just in the sense of trusting. Like if you look up in the dictionary, faith. We're talking about faith Bible faith. Say Bible faith. <coughs> new covenant faith. <coughs> so new covenant faith is a, is a spiritual gift. And new covenant faith is a fruit. Or is part of the fruit. Of our spirit beings. It's part of what we. A tree. Has fruit on it. If it's a healthy tree. You're a spirit being, and one of the ways you know that you walk in the spirit, that you're walking in the spirit according to that spirit and not according to the flesh, is that the way that you know is there'll be fruit. So if somebody, the Bible talks about the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, right before it talks about the fruit of the spirit. So if somebody is like shouting at you and is, you know, having a temper tantrum, or they're in strife, or they're getting argumentative with you. They might be a Christian, but they're not walking in the Spirit. And how do you know that? Because they're bearing fruit. And a lot of people talk in tongues, it's just not heavenly tongues. It's X's and O's and curse words. I always say that cursing is, is the devil's tongues. I mean, it's just cursing, I, and I'm convinced of that. It, it, as soon as you open your mouth to curse, you're letting the devil speak through you. God doesn't curse things, and, and He won't use that language. Don't yield yourself to it. We yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, and then we speak in heavenly language. Well, that takes yielding. People that curse like a sailor are yielding themselves to evil spirits. They, the Bible calls it giving place to the devil. And, and so therefore, 
Don't give place to the devil because if you give place to the devil, he's going to come in and hurt you. And God doesn't want you hurt. Hallelujah. And so therefore, but when we walk in the Spirit, which means, it simply means, you know, really, if it's accurately translated, walking in the Spirit, Spirit is small s. Not big s. Now we are walking, we're under the control of the Holy Spirit, but it's our recreated spirit being that the Bible is talking about. You are a spirit. So the minute you're born again, you're born of the spirit. So you are a spirit. Your spirit lives in a body and it has a soul. Mind, will, intellect. And so we are meant to walk in the spirit. Now I've heard some people say, well, you can't walk in the spirit 24-7. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Have, do I walk in the Spirit 24-7? No, I don't. But I can. And I'm, I'm learning and I'm being transformed from glory to glory into His image. And so that simply means that you are yielding to the Holy Ghost. And, and I'm telling you right now, I'm walking in the Spirit to a far greater degree than I did 10 years ago. And there are several people that, I mean, there are people that just, and I can't, I'm not going to name names of people, but there are great men and women of God that have just, I mean, once you learn to walk in the Spirit, I mean, it's just, it's the best way to walk. Well, how do you know if somebody's walking in the Spirit? The fruit? There's always, when, when, and you, the way you test fruit is under pressure. Yes. <laughs> Not when everything's going right. When everything's going wrong, that's when you test fruit. That's when you do the stress test. And, and so therefore, there's, I don't know how many of you have ever been through a stress test. I mean, maybe this week, maybe this morning already. The stress test. <laughs> and so, somebody once explained... That when you're under pressure, what, what is it that comes out of you? The short answer is whatever is in you. Just like orange, if you squeeze it, what comes out of it? Whatever's on the inside of it. What grape juice doesn't come out, orange juice comes out. So if you want to know what somebody's full of, <laughs> if they're full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to come out. Faith is going to come up. Love is going to come up under pressure because they're walking in the Spirit. And so pressure is actually a good thing when you're walking in the Spirit. When you're walking in the Spirit and you come under pressure, that's why the Bible says you count it all joy. You start laughing and, because, and if you read the fruit of the Spirit, it's not nine fruits, it's one fruit. Now I'm teaching... It's like the, the anointing of a teacher is on me today. And so it's a little bit different. And I just, I'm, I'm just, is it okay for me just to follow the Holy Spirit here? And this is all about receiving. <coughs> and it's all about receiving. But I'm just going to yield to the Holy Spirit here. I, I don't have the preacher on me. I have the teacher on me. <laughs> and some people out there, you need to hear this. And some people in here, you need to hear this. I need to hear this. So, when you walk, the fruit of the Spirit is one fruit. It's like an, an orange that has different segments to it. If you take the peel off, it's got different segments to it. Or tangerine. Take the peel off, got different segments to it. Actually, the fruit of the Spirit, the one fruit, is called love. Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love. And then love has got eight other parts to it. The Bible talks about, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, you can see how the Bible talks about love and describes love in another way. So in 1 Corinthians 13, you have a, a description of, love, of biblical love. And in Galatians 5, 
22 and 23, you have a description of biblical love. And, and so really, the fruit that you bear, who, who is God? What does the Bible say who God is? The Bible says God is love. We are made in His image and likeness. And so therefore, when we're born spiritually, who are we? We are love. And so therefore, when you walk in the Spirit, you walk in love. Agape, love. Well, how does love look? It's patient. It's kind. It's gentle. I mean, right there, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Well, I don't have any patience. Uh, who, who is the eye you're talking about? You're talking about the, the flesh eye. Flesh Nick has no patience. Flesh Nick <laughs> is not gentle. Flesh Nick has no self-control and cannot resist Certain types of pie. <laughs> okay, sorry, I went there. <laughs> Flesh Nick. If you honk your horn at me, Flesh Nick will, will share some things with you. <laughs> but Spirit Nick, created the image and likeness of God, when I'm provoked, my fruit that I bear will be love. Spirit Nick's the most patient person, as, as patient as Jesus. Spirit Nick is gentle. I mean, all the fruit of the Spirit. You cannot get Spirit Nick into strife, ever into an argument ever. And and so therefore it, and it's the easiest thing. It's not like, oh I need to I need to try to not do this. I need to try to not do that. I need to try to do this. No. Spirit you yeah. has faith. Yes. It's impossible not to have faith if you're walking in the spirit. It's impossible for you not to be gentle if you walk in the Spirit. In fact, you, it's impossible for you to sin when you walk in the Spirit. And when you go and read, you know, the Bible, and you read in, in the different 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you look at 1 John, it talks about, there's, there's a scripture in chapter 2 which talks about it's, it's impossible to sin. And he's talking there specifically to the spirit being, walking in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you, you can't even visualize yourself sinning. Well, just imagine yourself going down and doing this and doing that and the other. Sorry, I can't imagine myself doing that. But what happens to you when you try to imagine yourself doing that? I just feel all clammy and, and uncomfortable and... I mean, it's just, there's a lot of other things I can't imagine myself doing. I can't imagine myself jumping into a pool full of sharks. Now some, of, some people watching out there say, well, I like to do that. Not me. <laughs> and I cannot imagine myself jumping into a pool of sharks. I, if I even get close to the edge, it's just like, it's not even a temptation. So when you walk in the Spirit, I mean, then you're under the control of the Holy Spirit. You bear the fruit of the Spirit. And when you walk in the Spirit, you have faith. And so it is, it's part of the fruit that you bear. And then it's also given as a gift. One of the gifts of the Spirit is faith. And, and besides one of the gifts of the Spirit, which is supernatural faith, there's We've all been given a measure of faith. The Bible says we've all been given. Well, it's just the measure. Now, hang on. Look at who's giving the measure. The creator of heaven and earth. 
And so when he gives you a measure, it's bigger than any dump truck you've ever seen measuring. It's all the faith you ever need. So the fact is that as born again believers, we have faith. Say, I have faith. So if we have the faith, so therefore we have, if, when we have faith, we have ability to see things that are not revealed to natural eyes. We have the ability to discern them. We have the ability to receive them. And we have the ability to keep them. It's all by faith. That's why the Bible says the just will live by faith. Philippians 4.8 is a faith mindset. Read Philippians 4.8. So you can read Galatians 5.22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit. And you can test yourself, am I walking in the Spirit? Or you can go to Philippians 4.8 and, and you can test yourself, do I have the mind of Christ? And am I walking in the Spirit? The Bible is full of things like that so that we can know. Because He wants us to know. Somebody red faced, real mad. I am in the Spirit. And if you don't, <laughs> if you don't agree with me, I'm going to slap you. No, you're not. Well, how do you know? By your fruit. The Bible says we'll know them by their fruit. Well, we're not supposed to judge them. Now, judging has got nothing to do with seeing people's fruit. When the Bible says not to judge, it's talking about where you say that you know what's in somebody else's heart. You don't know what's in my heart. You will never know. But you, you, can, you can judge my fruit. You can know the fruit that I bear. But you can't know what's in my heart. Well, I know what he's like. I know what he's I know I know what his intent is. No, you don't. God does. The devil doesn't. God does. And, and it's the word of God, only the word of God that, that can that sharpen than any two edged sword, that can divide between the thoughts and, and the intents of the heart. Yeah. Only the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus. So nobody can know. Well, what if the Holy Spirit shows me? He's not going to show you what's in somebody's heart. That's none of your business. So therefore, just forget about it. You don't know. Don't claim to know what somebody's like on the inside. You don't know. Know that they're fearfully and wonderfully made in His image. Know that He loves them no matter what. Know that God is the God of the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth chance. You don't even know what you're like. Not fully. Because some, most people, I mean, walking around, especially not Christians, I mean, there's some deception there. They don't know. And, and so therefore, <laughs> God has made us good. And we don't, we don't judge. When you judge, you say, well, I know what somebody's like. No, you don't. You, but fruit inspection is scriptural. While you're in the flesh, well, don't judge me. No, I'm not judging you. I'm just, I'm just noticing the fruit. <laughs> well, how do you notice the fruit? Well, you just spat on me. Your face is red and you punch the wall. It's not judging. I'm just... It's pretty clear, actually. If I had a video, you could see it too. Or otherwise, here's a mirror. You want to know what flesh looks like? There's flesh. And, and so it's not... That's fine. And so when somebody does is in the flesh around you, then the best thing you should do is make sure you don't get there too. Because there's only one thing worse than somebody being in the flesh, and that's another person joining them in the flesh. But if you're in the spirit and another person's in the flesh, there won't be a fight ever. Because your spirit man cannot have strife. In fact, you'll release an anointing of peace. Okay, well, I better get back. Praise the Lord. We're just, that's, 
I've often wondered how Paul, the Apostle Paul, taught till wee hours of the morning. And somebody fell out, fell asleep, fell out the window and died, and he had to raise him from the dead. If you're long-winded, you have to have the same anointing that can raise people from the dead. <laughs> but I can, that's just how the word, it just, it just keeps, it's so rich. But we all have faith. We all have faith. And faith is the receiver. If you imagine a, a football player, the quarterback, throwing the ball, and here's, here you're running and, and the ball's been thrown, now faith is a receiver. You receive that ball and then you're going to run with it and do what you have to do. And so Jesus, as the quarterback, has already freely given, freely given as a quarterback. And so now, I mean, the devil's trying to play interference. And, I mean, but, but Jesus has freely given you everything. And he's given you the ability to run. And so now all you have to do is receive it. And faith is a receiver. And he's already given you the faith to receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now faith, it is, it, it's a receiver in, in a multifaceted way. What is the first thing you need if you're going to receive the football that's been thrown to you? Well, the first thing you need is you need to be able to see it. I mean, if you're completely blind, it's going to make it that much more difficult to receive what the football has been thrown to you. I mean, I'm not saying impossible, but very difficult. So the first thing you need to do is be able to see it. And, and so the first aspect of faith is that faith sees what is not revealed to the natural senses. That's why Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be opened, that you may perceive what you've been freely given or your inheritance. Mm -hmm. and, and so he prayed for the spiritual eyes to be opened. Faith has spiritual eyes. Now in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Faith is the evidence of things not seen, but it, it, it's not seen with the natural eyes. But yet it is seen. It's the evidence. So therefore there is evidence. You're seeing it, but it's talking about in the natural. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. And, and so this is the thing where it comes in. When you're walking in the Spirit, you're walking by faith. The first thing it does is it sees and perceives as real fact what's not revealed to the senses. If you're like Thomas, you say, well, if I don't see it with my natural eyes, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. But faith believes first and then sees later. The flesh has to see first and then believe. Yeah. And so therefore, with the eye of faith, Whatever you need has been freely given to you in the realm of the Spirit, and so faith sees it. There it is. There's my healing sitting right there. There's my divine help. There's my provision. There's all the money I need for my bills. There's my house. Whatever you need has been given. There, faith sees it. It perceives as real what's not revealed to the natural senses. And so therefore, it's something, it's as real to you as what, in fact, it's more real than what you see in the natural. All hell is breaking loose in the natural. So you get into the realm of the spirit. By the way, you know the quickest way to get into the, into the spirit? Stop praying in your heavenly language. You just stop worshipping the Lord, praying in your heavenly language. And you might be driving the car, so don't always close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes. Keep your eyes open. So pray in your heavenly language. And you immediately enter in through that door. Walking in the Spirit. Now you're in the Spirit. Now start looking around the room. Start looking around. Ah. There. There's my healing. There's my provision. All of a sudden it perceives what has already been freely given. And so you see it. So it's been released already. It, 
It's yours. It's suspended in the atmosphere. I look around in with the eye of faith and now I see what's been given to me. So at that particular moment, I don't have any anxiety or peace. I have everything that I need because it's already been freely given and I can see it. And so there's that, that supernatural ability to proceed. And that's why you're not moved by what you see with the natural. Some people have, are, are shocked at somebody that walks in the spirit. Well, it just seems like you, why don't you get worried? Why don't you get full of anxiety? Why don't you, no, I, I have perceived. I've, I see the lifeline. I see the safety net. Well, you're about to fall off the cliff. Yeah, but, but something's been revealed to me. I see a safety net. And when you're going over the cliff, well, yeah, I, I am going over the cliff, but I'm going to be okay because there's a safety net. Well, how do you know there's a safety net? I see it. Well, how do you see it? Well, it's in the Word. And my eyes are open to the Word, and, and I see it. So I'm calm. I have peace in the midst of the storm. I'm not moved. And, and so you see it, and faith literally translates that thing from the realm of the spirit into the natural realm. So, but living by faith, when the Bible says the just will live by faith, in opposite, it's saying that, that the just do not live by what they see and perceive in the natural. They live by what is revealed to them in the realm of the Spirit. They live by what is revealed to them in the Word of God. And, and so that, that different dimension to the eye of faith is more real than the natural dimension. And so therefore, even when ah, I have some pain, it's like immediately I get in the Spirit and I perceive a new body part. And I see myself healed and pain free. And then I do what I could not do. That's why somebody, when, when, when they step into faith, they, can, they step out of a wheelchair. Well, didn't you think you might fall on your face? No, the thought didn't cross my mind. And you ask some people, when they step out of the wheelchair, well, what did you see? Some of them say, well, I saw Jesus holding me by the hand. Some, I'm, again, with the eye of faith, you see things. And see, faith is not chance. Faith is not hope. Hope is, biblical hope is good. And we need hope. But hope is, well, I hope I'm healed. Faith is beyond. It's the, <laughs> it's the evidence of things hopeful. So therefore, it's beyond hope. I had hope, now I have faith. I have that receiver, and, and so faith is a whole other level. Now, the next level of faith that's revealed in the scripture, if you bring it up again, verse 35 and 36, it's all talking about, it's all talking about faith, and the just living by faith, but it says, do not throw away or do not cast aside, some translations say, your confidence. And this translation says your confident trust. Because confident, really confident trust is a good way of, or confident faith. Do not cast away your confidence. Remember the great reward it brings you. And really it's talking about faith, but it's just calling it something different. It's calling faith confident trust or confidence. Faith not only sees, but faith is, is a confidence. It, it knows. Faith doesn't hope. It knows. And so when you're operating in faith, you see it, but you have confidence. You have a confident trust. You know. You're fully persuaded. 
Say fully persuaded. You're fully persuaded. So you're not, you know, well, I hope I get through the sickness. No, no, no. If you're hoping you get through it, then thank God for hope. Hope's a good thing. But then stop and say, you know what, there's more. And immediately, just get yourself into the realm of the Spirit. And, and just begin to pray in your heavenly language. And just, thank you Lord. I walk in the Spirit. I am a Spirit being. I'm born of the Spirit. I am, I am walking in love. I bear the fruit of love. I've been given faith as a gift. I've been given faith, a measure of faith. It's all I need. I have it. I just, right now, I put on faith in Jesus' name. And I walk in it in the name of Jesus. And and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, which the Bible says, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're building yourself up. And so what are you building up? You're building up your spirit, man. You make, you're speaking strength to it. And, and so that so many times, people, they, they live in the flesh to such a degree that their mind is, is consumed with worry and stress and circumstances. And, and the circumstances are shouting so loud that they can't hear the voice of the Spirit. And every one of us has been in that place where circumstances are sounding so loud we can't hear the voice of the Spirit. I remember, I mean not too long ago, I dealt with somebody that was in the flesh and they got in the flesh and they, they threatened me. And I'm going to come over to your house and, and then they spoke in those demonic tongues. <laughs> do this to you and do that to you. And instantly I was just like, okay, thank you Lord, I'm in the Spirit. And so my flesh would have said, would you like me to give you the address? Can I come over to where you are, maybe? Where would you like to meet? Well, the enemy throws those thoughts, but you take every thought captive to the obedience of the anointing. So I mean, you just take that thought captive, take that thought captive. It's like, not well, Lord, can I just can I just visualize that for a little bit? No, you don't want to visualize it. You want it out of there. It's of the devil. Cast it aside. And so I'm just in my mind. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost while this person is going off, and, I, and the Lord just gives me wisdom, and and I just speak. And I'm speaking. The person calms down, calms down, calms down, calms down. Phone call ends fine. But now the phone calls over, and all of a sudden it's not over yet. Now, my natural mind is trying to, your natural mind likes to rehearse darkness. Mm -hmm. So natural mind is just wanting want to keep reminding me, because what does the devil want to do? He wants to pull me out of the spirit so that I can yield to the flesh. Mm -hmm. so, so I give place to the devil. So it's a bit of a, a struggle. The Bible says that your, your flesh is at war with the Spirit. And so sometimes it's a bit of a struggle and, and where you have to just be, <laughs> just take, take, on, take on more of that anointing. Thank you, Lord, I receive more anointing. And it's just, and it's just you, it's the, same, the same faith that sees you through is the same faith that keeps you. And I have the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. And you just begin to tell yourself, and speak the mind of Christ. And sometimes that, that thing, whatever happened to you, it tries to take you over. But yet it's at that time where, okay, I'm being tested. My flesh is feeding on that thing. I need to override my flesh. And I need to feed my spirit man right now. So now is a good time for me to rehearse a few scriptures. Now is a good time for me to pray in the Holy Ghost. Because I need to build myself up in my holy faith right now. So I build myself up in my holy faith. And I just say, thank you, Lord. I cast that aside. I speak a blessing upon that individual. I release them right now in the name of Jesus. 
And I thank you that even this, all things are currently right now working together for my good. I thank you, Lord. And then I thank you, you open the eyes of my spirit and I see in the spirit and I see that little devil, defeated devil who's trying to pull me into something for what he is. And then I see how big God is and I start, the joy of the Lord comes in. I start laughing and I start having peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. And now I'm walking by faith. So therefore you come in and as you walk by faith and just live by faith, that confident, that faith, it's, it's a knowing. You just know. Nothing shall by any means harm me. Well, what do you do? What if that guy shows up at your house and starts swinging? Well, the God of angel armies has got a few backup plans. He might just hit one of those angels. He won't even be able to reach their face. He'll probably hit his ankle. Boom. Well, what just happened to you? Well, I hit Gabriel's ankle. Well, what's that like? Not fun. I don't have to worry. I don't have to defend myself. I don't have to. I have a confident trust. Well, in the circumstances, this is going wrong, or that's going wrong, or this is being challenged. It doesn't matter. I'm walking in the Spirit. I have confident trust. I have, I have the joy of the Lord all the time. I have peace that passes understanding all the time. I'm patient. I have the ability to suffer long. I'm living by faith. And that same faith, I mean, it's that, it's that you have this boldness and this confidence. It's not arrogance. But the enemy wants to steal your confidence. Well, you can, you can, you can have faith that, that God one day can come through. But it's like he doesn't want you to be confident in who you are in Christ. If you're not confident in who you are in Christ, then, I mean, you just, it changes the way that you walk. And, and so the Bible says, don't cast away your confidence. Don't let go of that confidence. Amen. Who are you? I'm a child of God. I'm led by the Spirit. I'm walking in the Spirit. I've been freely given all things. Hallelujah. All things are working together for my good right now. Well, kindly open your eyes and look at what's happening in the natural. Well, I can... I don't need to be told that. I'm well aware of what's happening in the natural. But, but my spirit being is, has his eyes open. My spirit being is perceiving as real fact what's not revealed to my natural senses or yours. And so therefore I have complete calm. Esther's grandfather. They were expecting a child. And <laughs> her grandfather walked in miracles and signs and wonders and walked in the spirit. He was mentored by John G. Lake. And so his wife has a baby and it's a stillborn baby. And he's not moved by what he sees. He's not like, oh God, why would, you give, why would you give me a dead child? No. Something, he's, he, he doesn't see the, the baby with the eyes of the flesh. He looks and out of his mouth, see faith has a voice. It has eyes. It perceives, but it also has a voice. Out of his mouth comes... God will not give me a dead child. Puts his hands on the baby and the baby comes to life. And he names her Faith. <laughs> Wherever she goes, who are you? Faith. Evidence of things not seen. Who are you? Faith. Evidence of things hoped for. Substance of things not seen. Hallelujah. Who are you? Faith. 
You know, sometimes when we're not walking in the Spirit, something little, a little thing comes along and it's just like, oh, why did God do that? Why did God take it away? Why did God make me go through nine months just to take it away? No, He doesn't do that. That's not God. That's not His DNA. He won't do that. Don't receive it. Don't receive what the devil's pitching your way. Reject it. Receive what God has given you. He's freely given you all things. That's people give up on stuff. Well, I got prayed. I wish I had Benny Hinn here to pray for me one more time. You don't have Benny Hinn with you. But you have Jesus with you. And and so the eye of faith. That confident trust. I mean, here that pain comes back and it's like, pain? Who do you think you are? I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ. I don't receive you, you liar. Get out of my body, temple of the Holy Ghost. Trespassing illegally. Amen. You want to deal with my angels? I don't think so. Get out. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And it just changes. It has a voice. You just don't. You don't receive it. A doctor comes up. Well, you've been diagnosed with it. Don't shout at the doctor. The doctor's a nice person. They're also against sickness. They're operating in the best way that they know how to operate. Thank you so much, sir. I'm, I'm just, thank you so much for letting me know. And so, well, why aren't you worried? Uh, <laughs> when, you have, when you have an hour or so, I'll tell you. But I'm not, I'm not worried. I'm not concerned. And you just have, you just have that confident trust. Amen. And then when you, when you get into an environment where you can express with, without people thinking that you're Looney Tunes, <laughs> then you say what you need to say. I was reading a story of a minister. Uh, he was just sharing. His, my, his dad went in to the hospital and was in terrible shape and he was weeping, just weeping on the way to the hospital. And so they put his dad in, 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 in the room and as he's weeping, he's weeping and he's crying out to God. And as he's weeping, crying out to God, they put his, his dad in, in the operating theater, they cut him open and look and sew him up again. Come back up and said, well, the surgery's already been performed. Somebody went in before us, we don't see the scar, but it's obviously surgery's been done. They said, well, my, my dad's never had surgery. His mom said, my husband's never had surgery. And when he came up, he said, well, I've never had surgery. They said, they argued with him. No, no, there has been surgery. You see, again, it, it doesn't, the doctors are good. They operate on their level. But, but we have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great physician that has already freely given us all things. And, and, Nothing is a problem for him. In fact, the things that are problems to people, I mean, that's his expertise. And so therefore, it, it's been given to you, but now I'm just, the reason I'm, the Holy Ghost is having me preach on this is just to impart a little bit here and to impart some anointing and to impart and to stir you up a little bit right. for you to just, I mean, I don't know how many of you need this this morning, but I'm, I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up in Jesus' name. Because if, if He's already freely given me all things, then I want to walk in it. I don't know about you. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> when, when you're walking in faith, you're not walking in worry. You have peace that passes understanding. And it's not just it's not just that you that you have peace, but again you have faith perceives as real fact. You see things. You you see the path that you need to take. Well, I just don't know what to do. Yes, you do know what to do. Well, I really don't know what to do. Could you please tell me? No. I don't know what you should do, but you know. Well, how do I know? Because are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. Well, then your born again spirit man knows exactly what to do. What decision to make, exactly where to go, exactly 
So all you do, just, just, just build yourself up in your most holy faith in Jesus' name. Get in the Spirit. Say no to the flesh. Open up your spiritual eyes. And all of a sudden, you'll see what's not what you don't see with the natural. And not only will you see, but the anointing of the Lord will come upon that vision. And, and you, will have, you will have an unction to function. Hallelujah. And so all of a sudden, you begin to walk by faith. And you have that unction to function. And, and you'll see something. And, and you'll begin to do something. You'll begin to say something. You'll begin to move and, and live and have your being in Him. And, and the anointing of God's all over it. And when you need to be gentle, you'll be gentle. And when you need to be bold as a lion, you'll be bold as a lion. But yet you'll be content. And <laughs> you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Well, can I have that 24-7? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's just simply not realistic. Well, who's talking about being realistic? <laughs> I can just see Jesus on the cross. Well, I'm dying for you to just have, have I want you to have this just for maybe three hours a day. Well, the rest of the 21 hours can have it. Walk in the Spirit, eight hours max. The rest, you need to be in the flesh. It's just, you know, you can have some, but you have to really wait till you get to heaven to get it all. Oh, man. Really? <laughs> Really? Where, where's that in the Bible? Where's that in the Bible? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Live and move and have your being in Him. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive all that He's given you. Hallelujah. Now, with, with this, that the Holy Ghost is imparting. I mean, it's fun. If you have an anointed man or woman come to town, go and let them lay hands on you. And, you know, it's just another way of receiving. The fact is, you don't have to wait until then. You can just go and, and just, just as you just are in the Spirit. Now listen, walking in the Spirit, we use the football analogy. analogy. You can play football in the Spirit. It's not... It, it doesn't mean that you're, you're having some Pentecostal experience 24-7. We have a pious look on your face and whatever you, you know, eyes closed and shaking in the power of the Holy Ghost. No. That's something completely different. Thank God, you know, for being touched by the Spirit of God. But walking in the Spirit, it, it just means that your spirit man is hooked up with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and so therefore you play football better in the spirit. You take a, a test better in the spirit. You, everything you do, you do better. Because you do it, you do it by the divine power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. All of a sudden you're genius. <laughs> you have knowledge, but you know how to apply it. You have wisdom. You have all of those things. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What are the dreams that are on the inside of you? What are the things that the Lord has already freely given you? What are they? Don't cast away your confidence. Don't let the devil mess with your assurance. Don't let him take it. He's a liar. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do whatever he's called me to do. Why are you getting a little old there? You sure you can still do it? Yes, I can still do it. I can do all things. I can just see the devil saying to Sarah, Well, Sarah, you're going to be 90 next year. I think you need to give up on that child, 90. 
I can just see him saying to Abraham, his name there was Abraham, Abraham, you're going to be a, you're going to be 99. Just give up on it. And God says, call yourself Abraham, call yourself father of many nations. And so faith had a voice and he began to sound the father of many nations. He saw himself holding that baby. <laughs> I perceive something that I don't see with the natural eyes. It's called the father of faith. So therefore, <laughs> he had to. All of a sudden, he had a voice. And I'm the father of many nations. It got on to Sarah. And, and, huh. <laughs> They begin to perceive what was not revealed the natural and sort of begin to see the baby. I think we'll call him Isaac. It's a boy. It's a boy. They weren't even pregnant in the natural yet. It's a boy. We're pregnant in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the power of God. In the name of Jesus, the supernatural ability to receive. In the name of Jesus, don't you give up. Don't you pull back. Don't you cast away your confidence. Step into the spirit realm and live by faith. In the name of Jesus. And receive everything that is freely given you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And what's more important, Jesus loves you with an amazing love. God bless you. Hallelujah.